Welcome to the Entree Pastors Podcast on YouTube. This is a show that helps pastors think, act, and thrive as prosperous entrepreneurs. Well, hello there, and welcome to the Entree Pastors Podcast on YouTube. This is episode number 101. My name is John Sanders. I am one of the co-hosts of the Entree Pastors Podcast. And uh, in this episode, you are going to hear us interview a friend of ours by the name of Greg Reed. He's going to talk about how to become a workplace life coach. I absolutely love this conversation and I love this concept. I think what Greg is doing is something that so many other pastors could do. As a matter of fact, if you listen, he's going to share with you how he's helping other pastors do exactly this. It's taking your skills that you've honed as a pastor and going out into the corporate setting and shepherding people in the workplace and getting paid pretty well to do that. It's pastoring just in a different context. And uh, you'll hear Greg's story of how he got into that and how he's doing that and now how he's helping other pastors learn how to do the exact same thing. And so much about what Greg is doing, I'm excited about. I'm excited to share this conversation with you. So without any further ado, let's get to this interview I did recently with Greg Reed, learning how to become a workplace life coach. Here we go. Well, Greg, welcome to the Entree Pastors podcast, man. I'm delighted to have you on the show with me. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, it's, my, it's my first with the Entree Pastors, so uh, oh. that's exciting. So thank you. You're welcome. I always tell people you have truly arrived when you've become a guest on the Entree Pastor. Like I don't well, know where you that, go from here. So it's that's what I've been telling my worldwide audience that I finally <laughs> arrived because I know John and Les. There you go. There you go. Well, thanks for stroking our egos. Yeah. Now let's get back to hey, uh, humble okay. reality and, and move forward with our conversation. So remind yeah. me, how did uh, how did you come into contact with the Entree Pastors platform? Like how did you find us? How do we get connected? Yeah, so I was a part of a uh, a thing in Chicago with Ruth Haley Barton, uh, kind of on spiritual formation, and I met somebody there uh, that we kind of developed. She and uh, her business partner, we developed a relationship. Our team did, and then I signed, I did their coaching for a year, and then once that was finished, uh, then I wasn't able to continue on. But as she, you know, kind of heard what I was saying, she said, hey, I think you might want to get in touch with these guys. So it was through a friend of mine that we were in a coaching uh, network for about a year and I did a retreat with them. And then just through the process of talking with them, they knew you and John and or they knew you and Les and said, hey, I think this would be a good kind of a next step. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I always love hearing how people come into contact. Yeah. By the way, here's a little takeaway for anybody listening. At the end of the day, life is all about relationships. Business is all about relationships. And it's one of the things, it's one of my favorite parts of building this platform and, and being yeah. in business is just the relationships you get to build with awesome people. And so as, as you and I and, and Les got connected and we started to hear what your story has been and, and what right. your dream is, what you're uh, getting ready to launch. We are like, man, we want to work with you in this because this sounds awesome. And we're going to kind of put you out there as one of our experts in a specific niche industry. <laughs> but before we get deep into that, let's yeah, let's that, that's a That's a very scary place to go because I, <laughs> hey. I don't know that any of my adult kids would say I'm an expert in anything, especially not parenting. So. Well, uh, that's that makes two of us put me on that <laughs> list as well. But but you do have expertise. Maybe there's a difference between yeah. being an expert and having expertise. Maybe we're just, uh, sure. you know, dealing in semantics here. But you've yeah. done some stuff and and uh, you have carved out something that I think yeah. many, many other pastors would be interested to know about if they knew it was possible. And you can show them that not only is it possible, you can show them how to do it. And so we'll get to all of that, but let's just let that yeah. tension rest for a minute. Let's go back yeah. to more of the beginning. Tell us a little bit about your life. Where are you at in the world right now? Um, how did you get into pastoral ministry? Kind of give us the, the backdrop a little bit. Yeah. So I was uh, raised in a Christian home. I'm from Cocoa, Indiana, kind of in the middle of uh, uh, the wonderful state of Indiana, just north of Indianapolis, our capital. And so grew up there and... Um, Love to uh, be involved in uh, in sports, but my uncle was a heart surgeon in Kansas City, and I got to watch a couple of heart surgeries. 
And so I really had a desire to be a doctor. So I oh. went to, went to uh, undergrad and spent three years, you know, cutting up um, rats and sharks and pigs and all of that and doing uh, uh, chemistry you know, all kinds of uh, chemistry, uh, all kinds of uh, biology. Uh, but then God, probably my freshman year, really got my attention uh, through a, a weekend event that I went to back in my hometown. And so that kind of started a journey of being able to explore what it is that uh, God had in store for me, but still seemed like the medical uh, profession was the way to go. Uh, but by the time I was a uh, probably by the end of my junior year, I just really sensed that there was a, a restlessness and that I had to pursue what uh, I later learned was kind of a calling, uh, not to work with people's physical bodies, but in a sense, their spiritual body. So I still get to be a coach. You know, I wanted to be a teacher, a coach, and a doctor, uh, and a physician, and I still get to do all of those things that I think God wired me to do. So uh, ended up with a degree in philosophy and religion, which that plus about 10 or $12 can get you something really small to drink at Starbucks. Yeah. Um, stayed out a year, got married, still trying to discern, you know, I thought I was going to be a doctor. And uh, is this really what God has in store? And so my wife and I got married uh, during that year then went to grad school together and spent three years in Chicago and then went back to the same church that my wife's grandfather founded uh, mm -hmm. and that I had been a part of. And then I was there for a 43 and a half years. Wow. Um, so first 12, I was a humble associate. And then uh, the rest of the time, I was uh, the guy who led most of the mistakes um, so that so was 43 the, and a half years in the same church same, serving the same place. Pattern. Yeah. Wow. The only place that I've only place I've ever been. So I don't know what it's like to move around or uh, yeah. go somewhere else or all of that. It's, you know, just working through. So I, I learned a lot in that process of uh, uh, being in the same place for a long time. Well, all joking aside, man, that that is a, a testament to just God's faithfulness, but your faithfulness to stick with it. Um, that's that's rare in pastoral ministry. I mean, I know there's plenty of others that have had many decades in the same right. place, but I think it's rare. I mean, even even me, I I went into church planting with this thought of God. I'm I'll do one. I'm not doing. I'm not going to be that pastor <laughs> moving around to a new church every three years and yeah. Made it almost 17 years in that role, and I was ready yeah. for something new. So now I'm I'm on staff at a church. I preach once a month, but it's not carrying all that yeah. weight of being the the one who yeah. makes all the mistakes. So I only yeah. make a mistake once a month now. Um, so way <laughs> yeah, to go! I made man. pretty much pretty much every day, and then especially on Sundays. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, man. that's that's impressive. And uh, so, yeah. are you still at that church now? Are you still pastoring, or t uh, like what do you do these I'm days? I'm not so. Back in uh, 2021, I really sensed that uh, it was time to transition into something else. And so I had been a, uh, a chaplain uh, at uh, two car dealerships for about 15 years. And I had used my Friday mornings. I just really knew that I wanted to have more unsaved contacts. And I just needed to have more people than just working with Christians all the time. They're sometimes way more fun to work with than Christians. Uh, 100%, yes. I don't know if I can say that on a podcast, but they are. Yes, so, I'm uh, right there with you. Yeah. So um, so anyway, that, that really um, messed me up for pastoral ministry because I thought when, as I was thinking about what do I do when this pastoral time is done, um, I needed the income. But more than that, I just thought this is the way to have impact. And so that 15 years really helped prepare me for uh, launching my own business. So at, uh, at 70, I, in a sense, was without a job and uh, thought, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And I thought, I have to do something connected with uh, this whole thing of chaplaincy. So I was basically a contract worker for a large you know, chaplain organization. And I just, I knew that I couldn't continue to work for just a few dollars an hour. And so then that kind of led me to launch my own um, workplace life coaching company and figure all that out. So that's kind of was the start of where I am now that I just really 
think that this is one of the most effective ways to plant the gospel inside the workplace. I had a, uh, I saw a quote from Billy Graham. He, obviously, he said this some time back, but he said, I believe that one of the next great moves of God is going to be through the believers in the workplace. And okay. so I, I totally agree with that. So I just think that the workplace is where I can most eff effectively uh, plant the kingdom kind of in a, a secret kind of way. Um, yeah. So, uh, before yeah, we go so too that, much further down that road, let me yeah. back up and just make sure I've got this this clear. So for all those years of working as a pastor, for about the last 15 of those years, right. you, you said you were a chaplain at two car dealerships. Now, was that chaplaincy under the umbrella of that larger organization that you mentioned? Yes, yes. So okay. I did about probably four and a half hours. I spent both, mostly my mornings on my day off. I just thought, I want. I just feel like I need to to see what this is like. And then I just got so hooked by it that I thought, man, I've this, if I was going to do something with the rest of my life, that's what I want to do. I have to stay in the workplace. I have to stay in the marketplace in order to accomplish. So, and I didn't, I didn't want to go to another church in my town and pastor. I mean, that just, that was never going to be anything that I was going to do or take, take people with me and plant a new church. That right. was, that was just not an option. So I yeah. knew it had to be something that uh, got me into the place where people spend the majority of their time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and we won't we won't say names, and because our goal isn't yeah. to throw anyone under the bus. But the um, but the the model, the business model where you were working before wasn't awesome for you. Like like yeah. you were getting a very small percentage of. Yeah. The, the value that you were providing, you know, the, the most of that was going to the bigger organization. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was a great organization. So, you know, right. I learned a lot and I, I had good training. So, but that, that training then enabled me to say, I think I can do this. And I think I can help other people do this um, and be able to thrive on their own. Yeah. Uh, well, quick story. Work for somebody else. Just to make this okay, because it is okay to do that. Years ago, when I was a teenager, I worked for a full service car wash in Peoria, Illinois, and mainly just as the cars came through the line, we we you know sham them off out there. Sometimes you get stuck in the back vacuuming the cars out, but I did that. We also detailed cars, so every once in a while you'd get put in a detail shop where you're waxing cars right. and doing much more thorough uh, cleaning on them. And one day I was on a break and I just picked up a brochure in the uh, lobby there and I saw what they were charging. I knew I was making $7.50 an hour and I saw they were making several hundreds of dollars for these detailed yeah. cars. And I said, I know how to do this. So I got the training and I was grateful for it. But then I, I bought the supplies from the same company they did. And I went into business myself as a you know, multi detailer. So that's, that's a good metaphor, right? So that's the same. That's the same thing. Is that in a sense when I talked to them about getting out of my contract, they were very kind and gracious, and they said, "Hey, we're much more interested in the kingdom." But they recognized that I was trying to eliminate the middleman, and mm -hmm. and I was. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it allowed me to have way more freedom, and to be able to to offer some services that that I wouldn't have been able to do, um, you know, through another company. So yeah. it's, it's so then what you did was you started basically your own deal. You went into business for yourself. And and I like this too. I want to I want to explore this a little bit. Earlier you used the word chaplain, but then that word changed into workplace yeah. life coach. So I, I want to kind of get you to tell me more about that. But but you went into business as your for yourself as your own workplace life coach and and uh negotiated contracts with several corporations that were thrilled to have you come on and serve in that capacity. So um, so tell us that story. Take us into that. And, and don't forget to mention that nuance of what is a workplace life coach? How's that yeah. different to being a chaplain or why that terminology? Yeah. And I think the the chaplain name, a couple of reasons why I felt like I needed to change it is one is that was the name that the company I was serving under used, that right. I was a chaplain. So I felt like in order to, in a sense, not use their language and not compete with them. And then I think 
chaplain for people that probably are are more unchurched. I think the chaplain word maybe is more like somebody that's in a hospital and the chaplain comes to visit you if you're sick or you're dying or whatever. So I just felt like that there was, you know, of course, life coach has kind of become, I don't know, anybody even knew what a life coach was, you know, 10 years ago. And now that's a big deal. And so I looked at uh, what life coaching, I talked to somebody who is doing it in, on a large scale, and she told me that the average life coach that just has regular appointments, you know, books, you know, just maybe six sessions with somebody, the average life coach in America makes $21,000. Mm -hmm. And my wife said, I don't think that's going to get us there. Mm -hmm. And so I just knew that. And I and I started calculating that if I had 550 appointments a year and I charged seventy five dollars an hour, I would make just over forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I mean, I don't know how I was going to get five hundred and fifty appointments. So that's really what. So it was really kind of out of desperation that I thought well, then how am I going to do this? How am I going to make enough money? Uh, and I and I just I set a goal that I wanted to make more money than I had made as a pastor. Um, and I thought, how am I going to do that without pastoring? Because that's the only thing I've ever done for 43 years. Um, I mean, I knew how to, you know, give tennis lessons. I knew how to paint houses, but that wasn't going to, to bring in the kind of money that uh, that we needed. So it was really saying, I had 15 years. I knew how this larger company, how, you know, what they did. And so then I just began to explore what would it look like um, to develop a contract? What would it look like? I knew I needed to create an LLC because those companies uh, required some kind of insurance protection. And so the, the larger organization provided that on my behalf but I knew I needed to provide that. And then I thought, well, I've got to have a contract. So I worked with a couple of people to help me say, hey, what would need to go in a contract? And, you know, how, how do, what do I need to charge? I knew kind of what they charged. And so I used that as a basis. And then God just kind of sovereignly opened up another large company in our community, a biosolids company that uh, just happened to be looking for someone to be kind of their employee assistance person, chaplain. They'd had a variety of people, but nothing had really taken off. And so we had a conversation together and I said, hey, here's what I think I could do. So we settled on three days a week. And then what would that cost? And so I just had to try to start figuring out, okay, what do I want to make? in a year, now what do those contracts need to be? And then the automotive company, they had expanded to four locations. So I put a proposal together to give coaching to all four of their locations. And then there was a, a Coca-Cola distribution center that I'd already had some contact with uh, that a friend of mine was doing chaplaincy work there. And so I, uh, I went to them and said, hey, here's what I think I could do if I do this on my own. Um, so it was just, it was just kind of a, I mean, it was the right time. God's direction was just incredible, but that's, I think where my heart is now is that I think I can help other pastors to be able to experience what I've experienced. Cause I would say, John, that this has been the most impactful and most exciting 18 months of my life. I'm I'm writing that down because I want to capture that most impactful and exciting 18 months you've had in your life. Now, and that's not to denigrate the 43 no, years of pastoral ministry. That that was great. I mean, I loved, you know, I never um there wasn't one day that I thought I don't I don't want to do this or there wasn't one day I thought, "Oh man, I need to I, I want to hurry up and go home. What time is it?" I just never sensed that. I mean, I loved I loved pastoring and I thought I really did think I would do that all my life, but now I get to do that. I get to pastor people and love people and do what I think God created me to do, but it's inside of a work environment where they spend most of their time. They didn't spend most of their time, as you know, at my church building, but yeah. now I get to be with them. Um, I mean, if, if just, if it's okay, I wanted this past Friday. So, you know, 
three days ago. Um, and in my conversations at uh, these car dealerships, I had my first spiritual conversation with a young mechanic who opened up and talked about his brother's kind of forsaken faith. And so I got to say to him, well, hey, tell me, tell me about your faith journey. First time that's ever happened in probably six months. Had an opportunity to pray with a handful of people in person. I recruited some people for a community serving event that we're doing next week. I set a lunch appointment with a business owner who, matter of fact, owns a very large detailing business oh, wow. and franchises his detailing business um, because he's interested in a workplace life coach. Wow. Um, I was asked by two employees to officiate at their weddings, and I helped an employee work through his anger at God over the death of his dog. And I'm not an animal person, so that was a stretch for me. <laughs> so that, I mean, that's one day. Um, wow. And that there was way there was more that day, but that was just a part of one day because I'm out where people are building relationships, and so that's why I can say it was it's been the most impactful and exciting 18 months of my life. And I see the other thing I think I have the potential now to impact thousands of other pastors that I didn't really have when I was just overseeing one congregation. Yeah. And we'll get into that because now you're going to help other pastors do what you have right. been doing and, and learned to do. Yeah. Um, but I want to back up a couple of things. One thing you had said early on in our process of getting to know each other, and I may be paraphrasing a little bit, but what I took away from it was that, you know, I think you said something to the effect of I'm getting all of the things I loved about pastoring and basically none of the things I didn't like about pastoring <laughs> with this new Yeah. I'm doing as a workplace life coach and I'm making more money doing it. Yeah. Um, so again, it's not that we're trying to talk anybody out of pastoring, but no. the whole entree pastors thing is about showing pastors how they can use their pastoral skills in the marketplace. And clearly you have a shepherd's heart. I mean, that was evident to yeah. me the first time I talked to you and it's like, what? and now I get excited. I don't have as big of a shepherd's heart as you do. My pastoring gifts looked a little different, yeah. but I'm like, man, I get excited hearing you talk about being in the workplace, having these impactful conversations with people. It's like, I know there's people encouraged right now listening to this yeah. and thinking about the possibilities. Um, and it's really could even, I mean, even, I think if the average, I remember that, the statistics that the average church in America, this is prior to COVID, I think was 88. So mm -hmm. I I believe that the majority of pastors around the country are bivocational. And so that's really where my heart is. I think that's the direction that the church of Jesus Christ is headed, certainly in America, is a bivocational direction. And so I really think I I've stumbled onto something and God's helped me to see something that I think has incredible potential um, for uh, resources and impact, um, income and impact, uh, even for bivocational. They don't have to be somebody who's retired just saying, hey, I want some more money. It's yeah. uh, how do I use the time that I have? And it's and it's flexible. I mean, it works well, you know, if you go and work for anybody else, you go to Walmart or you go to a factory or whatever, you're going to have to be there at certain times. I have incredible freedom if somebody says, hey, could could you do a funeral this particular day? Well, I can I can shift my schedule around uh, because it's my schedule. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that it provides both for a bivocational pastor and a retired pastor. Um Everything that, I mean, if you have a pastor's heart, you're, you know, you need income, but you want to make impact. And yeah. I don't, I've never done anything that was more impactful than this. I love that. I want to back up and, and address two more things that we've, that we've passed over. One, I want to make, I want to connect some dots that someone might've missed. I picked up on it though, in your story, you were a while back, you were talking about, um, as you were moving forward, setting up your LLC and going through these things, then you you had a phrase, a statement about God opened a door mm -hmm. for a connection. And, and I just want to pause and highlight that so much of the time, uh, Greg, we we deal with pastors who are kind of um, paralyzed with fear. They're, they're not moving yeah. forward because they want to see all of the green lights in front of them 
knowing that it's all going to work out. And we often find ourselves encouraging our clients and our audience, our community members, like action brings clarity. It, you didn't say that God opened that door before you went and launched right. all this stuff and we're taking right. action. It's after the action steps were taking that right. lo and behold, opportunity presents itself when God opens a door. So I just wanted to make sure that yeah. people didn't miss that because I caught it when you said that and I wanted to draw that out. Um, the other thing I want to go back to is I'm coming back to that word chaplain and I'm going to share just again, why I love what you're doing. This is hundred percent my opinion. So if, if there's a chaplain listening to this, I, I want you to know, I deeply respect the work that you do, but Makes I've sense. always, I've always like pushed back on the word, like the word chaplain for me is not a warm and fuzzy word. And I'm going to tell a quick story here. I'm, I'm a full-time firefighter and have been for many years. And I've, so I've been in that space and it's not uncommon at all for departments to have chaplains. Right. They you know, recognize mm -hmm. the need for that. But so I have, I have worked closely with our chaplains on the department that I'm with and I'm irritated with them much of the time because I love pastors and they irritate me. So I, I think I've earned the right to speak <laughs> into pastors lives. And I've said this to them. If you think that, Coming into this community of firefighters, into our department, the, if you think that because you have a chaplain title and because you wear a collar or there's a cross hanging around your neck, that that is going to open doors for you, yeah. you are 100% mistaken. That word chaplain has put an immediate barrier between you and 99% of the people uh, in this line of work. For one, you're an outsider. You don't, you're not part of us, so you yeah. don't know what we do you have a cross or something that represents religion that could mean a whole lot of things to different people. And in my mind, personally, this is where I might offend somebody, but like, I've always seen like chaplains in my mind. When I picture a chaplain, it's, it's someone who's kind of pale and has a really soft hands and doesn't squeeze your hand very tight when he gives you a, firm, a handshake, you know, it's just kind of that dead fish thing. I'm like, yeah, you're a chaplain. So right. I deeply respect the work, but that's why I love Greg, what you're doing with this is that you're coming at it from an angle that right away it's taking down some of those defenses. Yeah. You're coming at it more from a business standpoint of like, look, I'm, I'm a workplace life coach, but the reality is you are shepherding people. You are pastoring right. people and you're having wide open conversations about their emotional health, their mental health, their yeah. spiritual health, their workplace health. I love it, man. So like, I'm, I'm just, I love what you're doing. And I wanted to go back and revisit that whole chaplain thing and, Put in my two cents there. So yeah. hopefully, and I think that that's that those are all the reasons why I really felt like that I needed to have something different as a title. Matter of fact, one of the uh, one of the owners, uh, it was probably the within the first week or so that I had uh, worked at the at the company, and uh, he said, "Hey, tell me what uh, what would you like for me to use as your title? You know, when I introduce you to people, how would you like for me to introduce you?" And, and I couldn't help myself. And I said, well, I really prefer most exalted grand poobah. But <laughs> if you if you think that Greg is simpler, go ahead and say Greg. Um, so, I mean, I just wanted I just want to be Greg. Yeah. Uh, and I don't I don't need to be for some people. The pastor thing really helps them. Uh, you know, these guys that asked me to do their weddings, you know, for them, they want somebody that's kind of official. But right. for most of the people, that gets in the way, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. That's not what Jesus had in mind, but it gets in the way. And so I just right. didn't want anything to get in the way. So I guess I want to use that title when it helps me to get into a hospital room to visit oh. somebody that's sick and dying. But I don't want to use it when it's a you know, when it's a truck driver that, uh, you know, he had a really bad experience when he was growing up with church. And the last thing he wants to do is talk to some religious person. And you see that self-awareness. And I think it's, I think that's the shrewdness that Jesus spoke about when he yeah. said, Be shrewd as serpents and gentle yeah. as doves, like have yeah. some self-awareness. I think that's my right. irritation with some in that profession. It's like, they, they think that they think, oh, people love us as pastors or chaplains. Like, no, actually, they don't. Like, they don't. for they many, don't. that's a barrier you're going to have to overcome. So, if you can have the humility to to come to basically say, I don't need that. I'm I'm just Greg. Right. You know, I'm not a chaplain. I'm not a pastor. Yeah. Here's the reality that we all know: you're going to get to be the pastor. You're going to get to right. to, to bring Jesus to those conversations. Um, anyway, so thank you for indulging me as I complained about the yeah. the word chaplain for a minute. Yeah. Uh, so. Workplace life coach, 
let one one last thing before we move into kind of the new phase of what you're getting ready to roll out this fall. Um, you you have a relative. I want our audience to hear this, Greg. You have a relatively small number of clients. Like it's not like you have to go out and sell hundreds and hundreds of these products to individuals. It's like right. you have a few contracts with a a small number of people. So, um, you know that and that that makes up for full-time work for you, full-time income. Yeah. What you're going to find, I know it is you're going to start to find more companies coming to you going, how do we get some of you, Greg? Like we want yeah. someone like you. So um, I just want our pastors to hear that. Like, man, this isn't, you're not talking about going out and making hundreds of sales. Yeah. You got to make a few. And there I mean, you go. The regular life coaching route is you're going to have to find probably hundreds of people to be your clients and you're always going to have to be promoting yourself. I don't ever have to think, where am I going to get someone to talk to? Where am I going to have someone to coach? I have probably over 600 people right now that are part of these three companies. And so I don't ever have to wonder, am I going to be able to get enough appointments? And what if somebody cancels the appointment and I lose $75? Um, yeah, two, I mean, with two large companies, that I have three, one, one's three days a week, one's two days a week, and one's a half a day a week, five hours. So that's more than enough um, to do, I mean, to, to make more than I've ever made in my life. Can I ask this, and you don't have to go too deep into detail or give away too much of your secret sauce, but what is a normal, what does a normal day look like for you when you go serve, service these corporations are you just there and available are you intentionally scheduling conversations right. with people are you presenting you know like a workplace seminar on something like right. what is what does your work look like yeah so i mean today for instance you know i started out with a there was a breakfast celebrating you know eight months of safety uh for the employees and then uh had a conversation with the uh, chief business officer to talk to him about my desire to scale this thing and how that might work in his industry, in his particular industry. Um, I think I already said that I, I made a, a, a visit to one of the employee's moms who's in a nursing home. Um, I'll, I'm leading a small group called The Way of the Shepherds, kind of a leadership training group. So I'll have a, an appointment with one of the guys who's going to miss our Thursday session. I'll walk around uh, and have conversations, try to have conversations with everybody that's on location. So maybe 50 people. So it's basically just doing pastoring and say, hey, John, tell me, you know, how was your weekend? So if it's on a Monday, then a lot of times it's, hey, you know, did you do anything exciting over the weekend? Which, you know, one, uh, probably six months ago, I said to one of the uh, employees, I said, hey, what'd you do over the weekend? And he said, well, I went to see my mom. I said, where's your mom? He said, well, she's in a nursing home. Well, what happened to her? And as he told me the story, then I said, hey, would it be okay if I would go see your mom? And so that day I had some out, I had some time that I was able to go and see his mom and his mom called him, said, hey, you'll never guess who came to see me. <laughs> so I th so a lot of it's just really walking around. If it's the car dealership, again, they're salespeople, they're mechanics, they're lube and oil people, they're office people. So just trying to, to have some kind of a meaningful connection with, you know, for some people, it's just, hey, you know, good to see. I, you know, it looks like you're really busy and they're, you know, their head's down in a, in a car and they're not going to have time for a conversation. Um, so it's just looking for opportunities. And every day, John, I think for me, the secret sauce is this, is that I pray on my way to every location, God, open up spiritual and supernatural conversations today. And it is just, it's remark. I shouldn't say it's remarkable. He's God. Yeah. But I mean, that just happens all the time that I think I never could have arranged that. I never could have worked out that timing. That never would have been possible had God not made it available that I could have had a supernatural conversation. Um, so it's just really walking around and looking for opportunities. And then I probably, I would say I pray for 10 times more people in person than I ever did as a pastor. 
Uh, I mean, one day I called my wife and I said, I've already prayed in person with eight people and it's not even lunch. Wow. <laughs> and so I, you know, I rarely ever had that other than a Sunday morning. Yeah. And so right. I think just, you know, today I called a guy, it was his birthday yesterday. I'd forgotten to call him. I apologize. Hey, I'm so sorry. I didn't get a hold of you yesterday. He said, I'm driving back from, uh, from a trip. He, and I said, well, wait, how, how long do you have to get home? He said, 900 miles. Hmm. And I said, well, hey, let me just, let me just pray for safety. Let me pray for your family. Who's in the car with you? And so then just being able to pray with him, um, so that's, you know, one of the things I've tried to do is when people have a birthday for some of the smaller companies, um, I try to call everybody on their birthday. It just, it's an excuse because they're scattered all around the United States. So some of the people I don't ever get a chance to talk to except on their birthday. Wow. And so we had a great conversation today and I promise you, he's going to remember that I called him on his birthday and I prayed for him while he traveled. And the next time something happens where there's a flat tire in his life, he'll reach out to me. That's good. Yeah, um, that's so good, man. I love this, Greg. So you are now getting positioning yourself to help other pastors do this. And, and right. I think it's okay to say this. If not, I can edit it out if you don't want this. But you're not yeah. necessarily building this as a, um, like, you're not scaling this out where you're going to be taking a percentage of the other people, you're just training them. You're getting paid to train them to right. go do it. And once they have the training, it's like, go launch it in your neighborhood. Yeah. Go start. My hope is that the, the pastors that, uh, that I train, then they can just take off and they can have 10 businesses. They can have six people working for them. I, you know, I have one person that's a 1099 underneath me, um, but they could do the same thing I'm doing in the, all over their entire city, their community, their state. Uh, yes, because I want them to be able to experience the the financial reward of being able to put in the hard work and then do this. So yeah. that's uh, so yes, that's exactly right. I don't want to, you know, now in my own city, there are some probably going to be some people who don't necessarily want to launch their own company. They're not really ready to do that. They don't want to take that risk. Um, you know, back to the risk thing, John. I can remember in the in the summer of 2021 when all of this was when I made the decision that I was going to leave my job. Um, I announced it in September, and I knew that at the end of the year I had no job and no income, mm. and I had no idea uh, what I was going to do. And so that uh, I mean, there's I, I had a lot of nights that I didn't sleep very well. And a lot of nights that I spent praying, a lot of nights that God was speaking to me and I was up late making notes. I had my phone out trying to, to dictate things that I felt like he was saying to me. So, so your idea of action, I just knew that I had to take action. I knew that I needed to start a company. I knew that I needed to do, I had to figure out contracts. So I started doing that, but I, I didn't really have anything in place other than I was making X number of dollars an hour working for somebody else. And that wasn't going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, way to go, man. I'm proud of you for the work that you've put in and just the clarity you have, the progress you've made in such a short period of time. And I love your heart of being a teacher. That's the thing like with Entree Pastors that I think maybe really connects us to you is that's our heart. Like we don't want to just yeah. I know I figured out how to do this for myself. I want to share this with other people. I want yeah. other pastors to experience that. Yeah. And I sense that in you as well. Um, thus the the course that you're putting together. And mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about that a little. Tell tell our audience what is it you're launching this fall, and we'll then we'll talk about how they can jump in and yeah. be a part of it if this is something that they want to learn from your expertise in. But what are you building? Yeah. So I started thinking, how do I how do I help other people like me? not have to go through because it it took some time um and i didn't really know what i was doing i had help but i think i can help other people now to streamline that and make that much more um much more available to them so i'm looking at a 90 day or 12 weeks uh on of an online um workplace life coaching kind of a cohort if you will and so here's the here's the problem that I think I'm solving. So my question to the audience is, are you a pastor with an eye problem? 
Do you need more income and long for greater impact in the world around you? Uh, I'm a pastor with the perfect solution just for you. I can train you in 90 days to become a well-paid workplace life coach and have the time of your life. Um, so that's really what I want to make available. So it's something where we would meet every week and we would walk through these, you know, basically four steps in this process. And I think at the end of that 12 weeks, that 90 days, they will have the tools they need to know how to do these things that took me months to try to figure out hmm. um, and probably the last 18 months to figure out plus some more. I love that. So, so and yeah, man, I love the model. I love what you're doing. I love your heart behind it. So you're training others to be a workplace life coach and you're kicking this off in September of 2023, right. this coming fall yeah. is when I recording yeah. this. So yeah, probably the second out. Second week of September is what it looks like. And so we'll do an hour a week and we'll walk through these steps of, in a sense, uh, you know, who's the right kind of person who really fits this. Uh, we're going to talk about the right, right, creating the right program, which I think if you have, um, you know, a program and a process, it takes the pressure off because it's like, okay, so I know how to do that and I can do that. And if they're already a pastor, they know how to love people, hopefully, and care for people. And so I don't have to, I don't have time to train them to do that, but I can give them the basics. Um, and then kind of uh, a way for them to have some tools that they could say, well, other than just walking around and helping people uh, and talking to people, what else? And so I have uh, something called uh, One Life Maps that helps people to recognize and respond to God in their story. So I'll, I'll give them, I have um, been trained to use those maps. There's a prepare and rich. I don't know what you used in your pre, in your helping couples, but I think it's out of Minneapolis. I think it's the best online tool that's available, not only to prepare people for marriage, but to help enrich their marriages. So I have a, a certification with them. So I'm allowed to train other people to use their materials. So I can train other pastors. So that will be a part of this because that's been a great tool. I just talked to somebody this morning that uh, called me about, about her wedding. And so I sent her a link and I said, hey, here's, here's, the, here's the tool that I like to use Look at that, see if you think that fits for you and your fiance, and then we'll talk about going from there. I love um, that. By the way, I use Prepare and Rich, and I love that you're bringing that. Like that is such a value add to what you're yeah. doing, getting pastors trained up with that tool. It was a game changer for me doing not only premarital uh, work, but also, you know, if I stepped into a married couple situation that was having yes. some difficulties, it gives a great snapshot with graphs mm -hmm. and colorful charts of kind of where things are at, where they're strong and where they need some yes. focused attention. So love yeah, that. Yeah, you get end up with a 17-page x-ray, if you will, oh. of a relationship. I could probably find all that out if I met with them for a year you know, at a time, but this way I can find it out just by having this x-ray and then we start walking through that. Oh, so those are the you. kinds of tools. And then I'll, I'll uh, have a couple of books that I want to send that are a part of this that I think have really helped me uh, to think about uh, how to how to do life. One of the ones that I that I loved reading during my transition time was Donald Miller wrote a book, Hero on a Mission. And you mentioned just a little bit ago that I don't, you know, you and I, we don't, I don't need to be the hero. I want to be a hero maker. Uh, yeah. And I want to help make heroes out of these pastors so that they get to go into businesses and, and also want to be able to help them with some marketing tools, some things that were helpful for me. In other words, when you go in and meet with the business owner, what, what do you say to him? Well, I want to help them to know what to say to him. Okay, what do you have to offer? What's my return on investment? Yeah. Uh, so I want to help the pastor, him or her, to say, hey, here's Here's how I could confidently go to a friend of mine. And, and it's really all about people that we know. I mean, these are people that I've, you know, that I knew that I had a connection with. And so, uh, you know, there were gatekeepers that I got to meet with and they helped get me into, uh, into the people I needed to see. 
Yeah, man, I'm getting excited. I'm gonna, I want to sit through this course now. Like I'm getting excited about it. So maybe I'll because that sounds like that's going to be worth the price of admission right there. Just those marketing yeah. tips of how do I go and introduce myself and yeah. you know get those relationships established. Well, I mean, I think paying you know a small amount of money that it's going to cost. Uh, I mean, even having a five hour a week contract will be double or triple what they're going to invest uh, up front. So that, I mean, they're going to end up with, uh, you know, having that paid for by uh, by just having one five day uh, contract. And those I don't think are very difficult to find at all. Man, that's awesome. I absolutely love that. Hey, before we wrap this up, you had a uh, gift that you wanted to make available to our yeah. audience, something you wanted to put in their hands. Tell yeah. us about that. And then I want to make a clear call to action where people know how to find you if they want to learn more about this and take a step forward. Okay. In the uh, the One Life Maps and being able to kind of look at your life and say, God, where where do I see you in my story? One of the maps has to do with this desires and longings. And I, I'm convinced that creating the life you want is a choice. Um, mm -hmm. And so our life is shaped by the end that you live for. And so I have this uh, worksheet that I prepared that's called desires and longings. And it really asks you to stand at a date three to five years into the future. And then you look back on your life and say, hey, what what motivates me? What are my what dreams are beginning to take shape? Uh, I did I did this last year and I looked at a date in 2032 saying, you know, what dreams are beginning to take shape? And that's where this whole thing of, you know, training pastors all over the country uh, so that they can impact thousands of employees that came out of there. What about your experiences, joys? What kind of investments am I making in, with my energy and my resources? Uh, what healthy habits? So it's just a way, I think, for people to say, I don't want to walk this uh, slow lane of mediocrity. I want a clear vision of where I think God is wants me to head. And so by looking into the future, um, and then saying, what do I want to be true about me in five years? Uh, I just think it's really clarifying. And so I so I would love to uh, send, it's just a Word document, kind of a PDF that yep. uh, I would love to send out for free just to say, hey, if this can help somebody to uh, dream about their investing and multiplying themselves, uh, then I think that would be great. I love that. Where do people go to get that? Or how do they uh, how do they register or sign up to get that right. out from you? Yeah. So probably the easiest way is just uh, my email. So the company I started was Thriving365 um, because that really states what I want to have happen. I want to help people to thrive, employees, owners to thrive 365 days. So my um, email address is greg at G-R-E-G at thriving365.life. There was a, uh, rather than a dot .com or a .org, they had .life available. I thought, well, that fits a hundred cool. times better because this is about life. Yeah, I love that. So yeah, so Greg at thriving365.life. That's great. And so I'm also guessing if they have any other questions or if they want right. to, you know, take a step forward in getting registered. Ultimately, we're going to have the registration for your course inside of our Pastors Business Alliance. So that's another place. If you're like, man, I don't need to know anything else. I'm ready to sign up, man. Just yeah. go to AndrePastors.com and uh, jump into our Pastors Business Alliance and you'll find Greg's course there uh, and can get registered for it there. So Greg, this is just right up our alley. This fits so much. And, and what I love yeah. about what Entree Pastors is becoming is we're becoming a hub of relationships and resources where Les and I can't be that expert guide to show people how to launch all of these different types of businesses. But as we meet people like you who have done it, who are doing it, and then are willing to teach others, and you're willing to come and kind of sh put your shoulder next to ours and, and uh, lift on this thing with us, man, we, we're we going to make a difference in some people's lives together. And uh, so I'm grateful for you kind of coming on board and being a part of our team here at Entree Pastors and and making this available to our community because I'm genuinely excited about the people that are going to jump in and and not only have their lives impacted, but 
the the lives of countless others that they serve through this. So this is going to be exciting, man. Yeah, well, I really appreciate the opportunity. And each time I talk with you and uh, and with Les, I think, man, this is the perfect uh, connection, the perfect who uh, to say, how do I how do I get this message out? And so I my I hope that these groups will be, you know, 12 or less. Uh, just so that we can have the kind of connection that I think uh, we want to have. And uh, I think I can really help uh, pastors from all over the country to experience uh, their best life possible uh, through something like this. I love it. Well, we're excited for you. We're cheering you on, and I'm grateful Thanks. for your time coming on and being a part of the show. So all the best, man, as you kick this thing off and uh, and make a huge difference. So thank you for being a part of it. Great. Thank you for uh, letting me be on. Appreciate it. Looking forward to uh, what's next. Well, hey, thanks for watching this episode of the Entree Pastors podcast. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be notified every time we release a new episode. If you'd like to get connected to other pastors who are learning to think, act, and thrive as prosperous entrepreneurs, then we invite you to check us out on Facebook. Just search for the Entree Pastors Connect group answer a few of our simple questions there and we'd love to include you in the conversations and if you're really ready to go to the next level then we invite you to join our entree pastors membership community when you become a monthly subscriber you will receive access to courses exclusive community and coaching that will help you along in your own entree pastors journey if there's anything else we can do to serve you please visit us at entreepastors.com and we will do our best to serve you there God bless everybody. See you soon.